Something is happening to the frogs in Chernobyl. What did the radioactivity do to them? We'll clarify that in this video, so be sure to stay tuned to the end so you don't miss the incredible original footage. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people, who then learn something too. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. Genetically modified dogs, radioactivity eating mushrooms. Those of you who have seen my Chernobyl documentary know that there are some pretty strange things going on at Chernobyl. And now we know that another species has been massively altered by radioactivity, frogs. Ooh. Yes, that's right. These little green croaking creatures have also fallen victim to massive radiation and have changed. A radioactively changed frog. I once asked the AI to visualize that, and this is what came out. Drop me a line in the comments as to what we should call this frog species. I think we need an appropriate name for such a Chernobyl horror frog. I'm looking forward to your suggestions. It would be pretty cool if the Chernobyl frogs really looked like that. But unfortunately they didn't mutate into gigantic and scary atomic monsters, their changes go in a completely different direction. To be precise, we are talking about tree frogs. They have been analyzed by scientists for years. Involved researcher Gennady Milanevsky said, Our study provides the first example that wildlife living in an environment with elevated radiation after a nuclear disaster show changes in pigmentation related to increased tolerance to radiation. How can we think of this in concrete terms? It goes like this. On the right we see a normal, green tree frog and on the left the Chernobyl variety. The Chernobyl tree frogs have lost their green color over time and now have a completely black coloration in some cases. What's going on? Researchers have found that tree frogs living near historically high radiation areas within the Chernobyl site have darker pigmentation than frogs from the same region in places with low radiation exposure. So the explanation obviously has something to do with radioactivity. Namely, the darker coloration is caused by increased production of melanin, a pigment that causes dark colors in many organisms, including humans and animals. Melanin, in fact, not only has the practical ability to protect us from annoying sunburn, but incidentally to absorb radiant energy and neutralize ionized molecules reducing the risk of cellular damage and increasing the chances of survival in such extreme regions as Chernobyl. The darker pigmented frogs at Chernobyl, some are already calling them frogs of color, are protected against the harmful effects of radiation and are better able to survive and reproduce. Biologist Timothy Musov said, the results of the study suggest that the frogs at Chernobyl may have adapted to radiation. If that's the case, it's a good example that there are adaptations in nature to respond to environmental stressors. Before I tell you exactly how this works, a quick note that you can help me out a lot with a thumbs up for the video. So if you want to make me really shine and reward the effort, I appreciate your like for the video. Thanks guys. So how does this work exactly? Does radioactivity immediately turn frogs black? No. It's an evolutionary process that takes place over several frog generations, and the frogs with a slightly darker complexion had a survival advantage after the nuclear disaster. Here we see that the Chernobyl tree frogs are not all the same black. It's sort of a tree frog skin color spectrum, and as radioactivity increased in the area, the tree frogs with slightly more melanin were statistically slightly more likely to survive than the tree frogs with less melanin. The darker frogs were able to tolerate the radioactivity better and therefore lived longer and were therefore able to reproduce more successfully. Survival of the fittest. This is how evolution always works. Those best adapted to an evolution can reproduce more successfully, allowing their genes to dominate future generations more. Let's say people who put pineapple on pizza have less chance of reproducing, ergo the pizza Hawaii problem is solved in a few generations. Just kidding, by the way. Not that the Pizza Hawaii fanatics will want to take revenge on me someday and stone me with pineapple. But of course, being a frog isn't just about withstanding radioactive radiation. You also have to protect yourself from predators, find a pretty frog lady, take care of the kids, start a 9 to 5 job, and spend the rest of your life in an open plan office. 
So I wouldn't like to be a frog there. How the evolutionary development of black coloration has affected all the other aspects of frog life is still being studied. For example, it is conceivable that the black frogs are now not as well protected from birds that want to eat them. The green color of most frog species makes sense, as it allows them to camouflage themselves better in swampy areas. It is even conceivable that a downward trend will now begin. Now that the radiation is decreasing and the green frogs can reproduce more effectively again. Unfortunately, the researchers had to interrupt their frog research for the time being because of the war in Ukraine. They write, we hope that the war in Ukraine will end soon and the international scientific community can return to study the fascinating ecosystems of Chernobyl. I find it super fascinating that different species have developed different strategies to defy radioactivity. For example, there is a radioactive fungus called Cryptococcus neoformans that grows around Chernobyl and is mutated due to radiation. This fungus even grows towards the areas with the highest radiation, as if it were reaching for its food there. And indeed, the fungus can probably convert gamma radiation into chemical energy for growth. In frogs, on the other hand, the melanin probably only serves to protect them from radiation and not to actively draw energy from it. Otherwise, we might really have our Chernobyl mutant monster frog here soon. Quick note that my subscriber count is mutating towards 15,000 right now. If this video was suggested to you, but you haven't subscribed yet or you know science enthusiastic friends and relatives, then I would be galactically happy if you helped me to reach the 15,000 frogs or subscriptions. Thanks guys. Let's stay with Soviet accidents. There were quite a few, not only Chernobyl. Many of them happened in space. And one case is particularly unbelievable. A Soviet cosmonaut fell from space to Earth and died tragically. How it could happen in incredible original footage, all this is in the video shown. Be sure to check it out. And if you want to support my work and prepare yourself for Christmas, be sure to check out the Astro Shop. You really help the channel a lot. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care guys.